morning, family. It's Lady Mara with this week's VP News and Views. Family, we want to remind you to register for in-person service weekly at 2 o'clock p.m. One person can register the entire household. Please select the number of attendees. Please register for the current week only. If registration is full, please add your name to the wait list. This will help us determine if and when an additional service is needed. If you are working on Sundays as a servant leader, you do not have to register. However, members of your household must register. Listen up, our digital service has shifted time to 10 a.m. Tune in on Sundays at 10 o'clock for the Sunday service. On Sundays, our online community will view the previous week's message. This shift is necessary to ensure the quality of service is presented in excellence. Thank you for your patience as we pivot. Family, as you know, we're celebrating Pastor January's 22nd year as pastor. Mark your calendars. There will be a special presentation on Sunday, October 31st, and we hope you plan to attend. There are a few ways you can participate. On Sundays, while supplies last, VPCOG masks will be given to in-person service attendees. We are asking you to only accept one mask per person, not one mask each time you attend. This will ensure as many members as possible receive this special free gift. We thank you in advance for your honesty and integrity. The Special Events Committee has decorated a purple box available every Sunday before and after service. You can place your cards and well wishes inside the seal box. And if you are not in attendance and would like to be a part of the gift box presentation, you can drop off a card during office hours or mail it to arrive before October 31st. On the back of your envelope, if you would please write the number 22 in big digits, we will know to include it inside the corporate gift box presentation. Mark your calendars, October the 23rd, 1 until 2.30 p.m., the Health and Wellness Ministry will present a special Zoom breast cancer gathering entitled, Our Story, Our Survival, Life After Cancer. You can find the link to this event in the newsletter or on the website. We are a family that prays together. Please keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. Sister Faye Hardiman. And family, let's pray for our bereaved, Sister Joyce Eddy, for the passing of her husband, Dr. Edward Eddy. Well, that concludes the video announcements for this week's BP News and Views. God bless you. Pastor Jay here. Welcome again to our wonderful digital services. Glad you're viewing us today. Hey, in, in uh, our efforts to make sure that you get quality uh, services every Sunday, uh, we're back to 10 a.m. for our digital services every Sunday, starting this Sunday. And we'll also be up to our current messages starting next week as well. But because we're actually uh, posting a week later, uh, what I'd like you to do is enjoy a sermon I preached two years ago at Vernon Park Church of God. This has never been telecast. I'm going to actually be preaching part 10 of our series, uh, We Are Our History. You're going to love this wonderful sermon. So don't forget, join us next week at 10 a.m. for part three of our series, God and Mankind. And now, enjoy today's message. You've been a delightful audience, and we thank you for all that you've done and been with us throughout the years. Today, we're in part 10 of our series, We Are Our History. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter, last time, we done wore the scripture out. But that's how you learn, through repetition. Repetition, repetition, over and over and over again. That's how you learn it. So if you have your scripture, stand with me. Let's honor God one more time in this particular text. Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. Let's all read together, and the Bible does say, For everything that was written in the past, was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We are our history. The word history simply means the study 
of past events, particularly in human affairs. Today, I want to conclude our series, and hopefully you've learned um, from the text that we've gone through. We've been actually looking at and examining how African Americans in the, the, the 300 years or so we've been here, uh, as well as the ancient Hebrews, how so much of it parallels, and how a few folks could keep so many people under subjection. We've talked about the tripartite system of oppression, talked about systems and what they are. The three things that the Egyptians learned to master over these people were economics, politics, and personal culture. Economics, politics, and personal culture. You want to know why it's hard sometimes you get a foothold in, in our society? Understand that this system does work today. I love America. Let me say that today. I love America. I'm an American. I pay taxes. But the Bible said the truth will set you or make you free. You got to understand your history. The pharaohs understood that this kind of servitude made them dominant. But it also distorted the very existence of those they did not dominate. The same has happened with African Americans. And if you don't stay close to your history, you'll end up being what somebody else wants you to be. I, t I don't take my freedom for granted. Somebody said, uh, Brother Artie, that it is easy to take liberty for granted when you have never had, to take, had it taken from you. When you've always been free, when you've always been on top, and you've always got exactly what you wanted, it doesn't mean that much. But to my grandparents, my grandfather, who never got a chance to vote in the state of his birth of Alabama, it meant a lot to him. And he taught us about those things. Over the few weeks, we talked about how the tripartite system of domination has generational power. We talked about, and this has no slight on anybody working for these corporations today, we talked about, and I showed you how all these corporations on the screen, every one of them, they all benefited from the slavery of Africans. All of them did. They had a head start, and that's why they're even large or larger today. We also talked about how even these East Coast universities, how they actually were funded in the Northeast, Harvard, Columbia, Princeton, Georgetown, and Yale, through the slave trade. And so the realities of, of knowing the truth helps you understand why sometimes it seems like you can't catch up. Ain't nothing wrong with being black. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's just the fact that you understand how things go. It means you don't hate people, but you realize the Jews understood their history, and they do today. Now, last week, I'm going to do two sermons and, and one sermon, and I'm going to finish last week's sermon, then finish this week's sermon in my last 31 minutes. Because some of y'all got a cheesecake and some ribs waiting for you at your house. And you're going to tiptoe between the raindrops get you some sunlight. I get it. Remember last week we said that all freedom is what? Dramatic. All freedom is dramatic. What is freedom? It's the absence of necessity, a coercion, or constraint in your choices or your actions. It means you're independent. The idea of freedom advances the very notion of drama, to be stuck somewhere or held somewhere, held captive, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, and then no longer have that as your reality. That means drama. Yeah. To go from one lifestyle to another lifestyle means drama. Yeah. And I didn't finish last week, but, but as we, in Independence Day weekend, I'm not, I'm not kidding, Memorial Day weekend, we honor warriors, and I want to honor those warriors of faith today. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Let's finish up last week. In Exodus chapter 13, Verse number 17, and this is a history lesson, do it real quick. Read with me, the Bible says what? When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them. Have you ever asked God, why so long? This is one of the deepest scriptures in the Bible. This is a five-lesson study right here. Because the way we sing about the Red Sea, talk about the Red Sea, and the drama of the Red Sea, looking at the Ten Commandments movie, When the Red Sea Goes Up, that movie is 62 years old. I know, because it came out the year I was born, 1956. The Red Sea, Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's army, drowned in the Red Sea. 
The Bible says there was a shorter way to the promise. And God did not lead them that way. Does that make sense? Why would God take you the long way? If you read your history, what you'll know is the Egyptians were systematic. And they also had this system of border posts that God had them avoid and sent them the Red Sea way. <laughs> the Egyptians did not have a wall to keep people out and in, but they, you couldn't just walk into Egypt. And you couldn't just walk out of Egypt. It was systematically set up. It was hard to get in. It was hard to get out. And God knew what they didn't know. Because here's the thing about it. If you've always been in your neighborhood, you don't know what road to take downtown. That's why it's good to have a current GPS. A current GPS will tell you, don't go that way. You might got them good GPS that said, we're going to change your route due to traffic difficulties. That's what God did. They had never been outside of Egypt, and they just said, we're going to go that way because that's the quickest way downtown. And God said, nope, I'm not going to lead you that way. It's shorter, but I don't want you to go that way. Have you ever wondered why it's taking so long? I mean, Lord, I've been waiting all this time. My biological clock is ticking. <laughs> Write this down. Some systems are best avoided. Moses was with them, and God said, even though you have Moses, the man of miracles, you can't go this way. You are my people. I am your God. I've done all of that. But sometimes God will say, I'm going to take you around all this. I'm going to take you around all this. Uh, Go back to verse number 17, and you'll find out why. Read with me verse 17. It says, For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt armed. Mm. See, Red Sea freedom is always dramatic. But the Red Sea was God's idea. I'm talking to somebody here right now. You've gone through the Red Sea. You've gone through some serious situation. But that's God's idea. Sometimes what God do, God will send you through alternative routes. Now, now, when you read the first part of 17, it seems like God is just being unfair. But if you read the last part, you realize that God says, wait a minute. I know how much fighter in these people. I know how much fighter in them. And he said, they, they, they. now, if you read it, it looks like, God don't trust them. But God said, if they face war, they might change their minds. Then you go down to the bottom of verse 18, it says, the Israelites went up out of Egypt armed for battle. It seems like, God, we ready, but you ain't ready for us. Until you understand the difference between a battle and a war. What is a battle? A battle is a hostile encounter. It's an encounter. An engagement between opposing military forces. That's what a battle is. What is a war? A war is a contest carried on by forces of arms as in a series of battles or campaigns. In other words, battles are short conflicts. Wars are long campaigns. God said they got battle in them, but they ain't got no war in them. Take a look around the room. The King James Version says, that these men and women, they were harnessed. Today we'll say in somebody's arm, they are strapped. But they were strapped for a battle. They were not strapped for a war. God knows how much fight is in us. Some ball players are good in the regular season. They're great regular season ball players. James Harden can score 43 points in the regular season. He's a good regular season guy. He ain't a good playoff guy. Some people are born for battles. They can't handle war. God looked at his people that he had freed and said, they're good for a fight, but they ain't good for no long-term battle. These people waiting for them have been doing this for so long. They're, they got generals and they wage war. There are no generals in this group. So God says, even though Moses is here and they are here, I'm not going to sacrifice them because no matter how much they pray, they ain't got that much fight in them. 
I've been in ministry 43 years. I've pastored almost 20 years. I can tell you, everybody can sing a hymn, but everybody can't fight. It's easy for people to beg out and come up with an excuse why they don't want to go through all of that with you. Because they're good on Sunday. It's just Monday through Saturday they ain't no count. You got to know who you're standing up with. Because if you're going to be free, understand that those that have been free longer than you have set up systems to help you not be free. That makes sense in church. So when you look at the scripture, understand you can be armed for war, armed for battle, but not ready for war. God knows how much fight is in us. I, I, I honor Vernon Park. This is a fighting group of people. Not everybody. People will make up a devil to run from. My grandma used to say, every generation is wiser but weaker. They can think they just can't fight very well. You ever watch folks go into a, a mall and a shopping a lot, parking lot in the mall? And you got 80 spaces about three rows back. And they'll circle five times to get close to the handicap spot. Because people don't even like walking no more. All right, let me finish up. Lesson number F. Final lesson, end of series. Number F. Never leave your history behind. Never leave your history behind. Talk a little bit about Joseph. Joseph was the patriarch. He was a man of unusual faith, unusual wisdom. Joseph was the forerunner to his people. Remember when I taught you how Joseph was already in Egypt? You're never the first. You're not the first. It's somebody that came before you. And Joseph, though he was this mighty man of God, he never returned to live in his homeland. He went from slavery to being the vice president of Egypt. Joseph prospered in the same land he was once a slave. But the Bible said he died in the land of his people became slave at. Scripture says in Genesis chapter 50, verse 26, the second part, it says, and after they embalmed Joseph, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. After he, they embalmed Joseph, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Joseph is strange, so he had a funeral, but he was never buried. There's some past you don't bury. Write that down. You can say goodbye to it, but you never put flowers on its grave. There is some history that should travel with you wherever you go, whatever you do. There's somebody in your family line that was always the star of the show. I don't know if it was Big Mama, Little Daddy, whoever it was, but it was always somebody that had some wisdom that everybody quoted. And, there's, and he never had a... Funeral, funeral. Now, as I said to you a few weeks ago, if you go to the website of the National Institute of Mental Health, there are 530 fears listed. 530 fears. I gave you a bunch of them about five weeks ago. There's one we did not talk about. Sound it out. Yeah. Athosagoraphobia or something like that, yes. <laughs> this is one we do not talk about, but it's very, very prevalent in our, in our generation. What is it? It is the fear of being forgotten. It is real fear. There are some folks who are scared when they leave the room that other folks will never think of them again. But I believe you can become unforgettable, as Nat King Cole said. You become unforgettable. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be well-known. You don't have to be well-liked to leave a legacy. Benjamin Franklin said something. I want you all to read it for me. Franklin said what? He said, if you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead, either write something worth reading or do something. Do something. If you don't want to be forgotten, whether it's to one person or 1,000 people, leave a legacy. What is a legacy, Pastor Jay? Legacy is a historical marker to line up behind. 
You're always going to have your own flavor, have your own rhythm, but there should be something in your history that keeps you in formation in your purpose. Dizzy Gillespie, that great trumpeter, said, Dr. Eddie, that freedom without organization is chaos. What we see a lot on the South Side is chaos. Because it's freedom without organization. Nobody's leading. So the reality is your historical legacy is a sacred thing. Treat it as such. I got 19 minutes. Turn to Exodus chapter 13, last group of scripture. Very, very, another very heavy scripture. Exodus 13. Let's read uh, verse 19. Exodus 13, verse 19. And the Bible says, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid. And then you must carry my bones up with you for four centuries, 400 years. Joseph's body is not lost or forgotten. Every generation is taught over there in that shed is the body of our father Joseph. Every child in Sunday school, every child in, 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 in middle school, every adult knew that Joseph's body is over there. Even when they were in slavery. Joseph's body is right there. I want to ask you to carry your history with you, even when it's a strain to do it. You got to carry it with you. So, so look at this real quick. They leave Egypt in a hurry, in a haste, but they don't forget about Joseph's body. Even though they're running from Pharaoh through the Red Sea. If you go back and look at the movie of Charleston Heston, there's this little scene about 20 seconds long, and they run through the Red Sea, and there's Aaron and a group of guys called the Levites. And it's the strangest scene in the movie, because in it, there's a funeral procession in the Red Sea. They're carrying a coffin in the movie. It is historically correct. It is the coffin of Joseph. They're running for their lives, and there are six Levites and Aaron in front of them, and they're running with his body. Never leave your history behind. As they journeyed through the wilderness for 40 years, they carried two arks with them. You know the Bible. The first is the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. They had these two boxes. One is the Ark of the Covenant, and it symbolizes God's presence and his justice. The other ark, the other box they carry is the coffin of Joseph. Joseph's coffin symbolizes God's faithfulness, God's mercy, and God's forgiveness. If you ever want to stay in the right mind of God, keep something with you that reminds you of two things, of God's faithfulness, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's justice. I don't care what kind of music you listen to. I don't care what church you go to. You can go to a shouting church or a quiet church. They can sprinkle you or dump you. It doesn't matter to me. But keep that in your mind. Keep that in your history because your history will remind you of what God has been and what God can be. The reason why so many Christians commit spiritual suicide nowadays, they've lost track of what God had been and what God has done. You cannot lose God when you bury your mama and daddy. God is still God. So look at the history, Brother Eddie. His coffin is heavy. Any of y'all ever been pallbearers in a funeral? Even when a little person, it's heavy. I've been in this very room and said, we need two more pallbearers. <laughs> Understand the text. The coffin is heavy, but it's a symbol of the history that goes with him. So history keeps going. And then Moses dies. And then God buries Moses. But God does not bury Joseph. I'm going to bury him. Y'all take this body with you on. It's incredible. When our forefathers pass away, we lose part of history, but you don't lose God. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody in church? Yeah. They cross the Jordan. They go into the promised land, Brother Charles. They go on the dry ground. And as they go on the dry ground, they carry the bones of Joseph on the dry ground. In my last 10 minutes, read your Bible. 
And what you'll notice is they conquest all of Canaan. Joshua had 32 enemies that Moses never had. Let me tell you something. The higher you go, the different the enemies become. Your bottom feeder enemies you had in the hood, they don't make it to the, to the Wall Street. That's a whole different kind of folk. Y'all still worried about folks saying, they're going to lynch us. Ain't nobody trying to lynch you no more. There's a different kind of lynching going on. For as much as Moses was celebrated in all the great battles he won, there were 32 enemies that Joshua and the people had that Moses never had. And God showed them how to defeat each one. Now, when they got over in the promised land, there were no more manna from heaven. There were no more water coming out of rocks. But there was a wisdom and a favor tied to them. I'm saying to you right now, Vernon Park, there's a wisdom and a favor tied to you. It's the only reason you're still on this land. There ain't no man dropping from the sky. Ain't nobody walking up and hand us no money. But God will do certain things. You have enemies here that the Wyatts never knew about. Joshua dies. Eventually he's buried. Canaan is finally settled. And finally Joseph's bones come to rest. Turn to Joshua. Last scripture. We're done. Joshua chapter 24, verse 32. I trust you will remember these lessons. Joshua chapter 24, read with me the final, final offering for this series. And the Bible says, And Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, buried in Shechem, in the tract of land that Jacob bought, for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. It is 460 something years later after he dies. And the Bible says they are true to their history. And he said, I know God's going to bless you someday, so I want you to take these bones of mine and bury them in the place that I desire in my homeland. Now, you might think you want to play something down. You might think that this is just a story, but it is all true. You can go some places over, overseas in the Middle East, and they got two or three places that they say Jesus was buried because it makes money. You go to some places, you go, there's two or three places where they'll say, well, the Ark of the Covenant is over here. It's over there. I've been to Ethiopia, and they took me out in the country in Ethiopia, and I had preached. I didn't know where they were taking me. And it kind of, we, we went up on this big hill, Brother Chin, and they made me get out the car. So I thought, oh, they're going to kill me up here on this hill. <laughs> That's my American Negro way of thinking. <laughs> Been watching too much Godfather and stuff like that. And we walked to the edge, and down in the valley, there is this bone white building. Bright white. And this large black rod fence around it, and soldiers with red hats in front of it. And the man says, do you know what you are looking at? I said, no. I don't know. <laughs> no, sir, I don't know. I don't. He said, in that building, that building is more protected than the king's palace. The president is not more protected than what's in that building. I said, what's in the building? He said, beneath it, in the tomb, is the Ark of the Covenant. The real Ark of the Covenant. Now, whether he's telling the truth or not, I don't know. But that's what he said. But when it comes to Joseph's bones, they put him in the ground, entombed him in a place that's now called Nablus. And if you look at history books, this is the little chapel they built. You see how awkward it looks with the stones and everything. And inside there, under the dome, in the ground, is Joseph's bones. It is so believed so that even years later, in 1910, they took a picture of a soldier who actually, they would always have soldiers at his tomb because Father Joseph lived there or laid there. That's what tomb was. 2003, if you look at your history books or go online, you'll notice the Palestinians attacked and tore that whole place down, tore it all down, even tore the little uh, coffin cover thing, tore it up. And his body, if I understand correctly, was still underneath it. And over the years, the Jews were allowed to go back 
to that spot twice a year, but only at night. I think only 700 can go. And, and online, you can go and you can watch them. Even when it was torn down, they would get off buses, old and young alike, priests and just regular people. And they would all go, get around. It wasn't, it wasn't even a roof left anymore. They would lay on his grave and cry. And then at the end, they would sing a song, We Are All Happy. Before they would go back on the bus, they'd all say, even the little kids would say, they taught the kids how to do the victory dance. Because there's a sect of the Jews that believe if you honor your faithful dead, and you call out Jehovah's name, and put your hand on their grave, God will do things for you for their sake. And so they, over the last eight, nine years, they rebuilt it. And even if you go there now, this is the son of one of my friends. At the very same spot, they rebuilt it like it was. If you go to Israel now, ask them to take you by where Joseph's bones are. And now it's time to give. Those of you that are watching our broadcast online via Facebook or YouTube, if this is your week to give your tithes and offering, you may do so via PayPal or Tithely. You can also mail your payment into our post office box located in the city of Glenwood or come up to the church office during our office hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And if you're visiting with us, Please be sure to give your tithes to your church home. However, if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you'd like to sow a seed in good soil, we'll be sure you will receive a receipt for your contributions. God bless you. You can give through these portals on the screen as well. And thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this special digital presentation with Pastor Jay. We are our history. Join us next week at 10 a.m. for part three of God and Mankind. Mm -hmm.